So I'm assuming that most Larry Bird fans are white. I would consider myself a Larry Bird fan as well, along with my mom as well. Would you guys still love Larry Bird and get in the comment section and praise him and say that he's the greatest basketball player you've ever seen and he's better than LeBron, all of that stuff, if he was not white? Get in the comment section and let me know. Hey yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Kane. Please subscribe and hit that bell so you always know whenever I drop that heat. Today I got Magic vs. Bird, A Courtship of Rivals Part 2. I really, really enjoyed the first part, man. So let's get it. The National Basketball Association in its 33rd season is troubled by diminishing crowds and declining television ratings, signs that fan interest may be waning. If college basketball was flourishing at the end of the 1970s, the pro game was crumbling. After the golden era of Bill Russell and Jerry West in the 1960s, a merger with the ABA in 1976 mm. had led not only to new teams, but a new temperament. It was a new league with new times, with renegades, <laughs> with individuals. Okay. <clears throat> there was an argument made, plausibly, I think, that it was too black a league for the United States of America in the late 1970s. You think about the Knickerbockers at the time. The running joke was it was the, you know, it was the, it, it, that's what it was. It, all right, all right. Let me let me stop that for a moment. Um, the league being too black. Yeah, I don't I don't like that shit at all. Um, when you play basketball, when you play a sport that you're good at, you know, sometimes you're gonna scrap. If there just happen to be white people in the stands, there's white people in the stands. Um, when people fight in hockey, nobody ever says, hey, the, the, the hockey, the NHL is too white. So I don't like that too black shit, man. That shit is, I don't really like that. And um, I got a question. So the ABA, when they said the ABA and the NBA merger, um, was the ABA back in the day where most of the black players were? I don't know that for a fact. So please get in the comment section to help me out with that. Word. It's turning off a lot of white white customers that are coming to the game, you know? Uh, Why? Yeah. I think there's still a, there's a conflict between the white and the black, and uh, I don't enjoy going to the basketball and seeing all black players. I mean, I... What the f... <laughs> hey, man. People were so bold back then, man. But you know what, though? I don't know who that individual was, but I respect people who feel that way about the players that you pay money essentially to go watch, right? Even if it's not even in the basketball court, anybody who feels that way about a different group of people, black, white, whatever, who actually says it without, you know, I'd rather somebody like that than somebody get around me and be fake as hell and talk behind my back and this is really how you feel. That's fucking embarrassing, man. Get your shit together. When they said too black, they meant not just in terms of color, but in terms of style. Let me get mine and the hell with yours basketball for us was about the best moves you wanted to be uh, that big player that everybody talked about you wanted to be the one mm. you didn't think about the championships or team play and those were just the issues on the court the nba had this image of an all-black league with a bunch of guys who did drugs the teams were losing money and uh, they had no sponsors and that's pretty much a death knell right there it's a known fact that you need your white superstars. Um, you just need more white ball players on the team for the white fans to identify with. And in the newest member of the Boston Celtics, that's exactly what the league appeared to be getting. There's hope he can help solve professional basketball's difficulties, which some say are compounded by a question of black and white. Great white hope. Great white hope. What does that mean? Well, you know, it's very hard to say because there's a lot of great white players around and, and I just hope that I can just fit in as well as some of them that has fit in. I'm sorry to say this, but I don't agree with that shit at all. Um, before Larry Bird came into the game, pause, who were the great white players? I, I really don't know, so please educate me. Educate me. From that designation, he made it very clear, almost from day one, that he was not the great white hope. You know, the, the great players are the black players, and they're the best. 
Y'all yeah, heard that shit? Meant little to black Celtics <laughs> like Curtis I'm just Rowe, Sidney Wicks, and Cedric Maxwell. Not really. Who looked at Bird and saw not the great white hope, but another case of great white hype. Mm. He didn't impress me no more than any other white guy I've ever seen play before. I think that you would say that most black players at the time were racist in, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better than any black guy. Yeah. When I walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. I sort of enjoyed it because I knew I was going to battle them all day. But Word. Curtis and Sydney didn't last long. They didn't make it through the first practice and they were cut. So then it was just Cedric. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow, he can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. This is gonna be a layup. Bam, knocks down a jump shot. Okay, maybe that was luck. Gets the ball again. Bam, knocks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm gonna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him what it's like. 20 feet away. Bam, 25 feet away, bam. <laughs> I, my mind just goes to the, damn, this white guy can play. Yeah. It was a good thing, too. For Larry Bird, man, the amount of pressure. So I hate to compare Larry Bird to this next person, but there's a lot, I mean, both of them coming out of college, there's a lot of similarities between uh, Larry Bird and, and Caitlin Clark. You know what I'm saying? She is not in any way, shape, or form the talent that Larry Bird was, but they both coming out and people are looking at them as the savior. And obviously Larry Bird, you know, he put that shit to bed, you know, he answered everything with his game, but that's, that is a lot of fucking pressure, man. You're walking into a situation where you're the only person that looks like yourself there. And then anybody else that you find there who might be white is not going to be as nice as you so shout out to larry bird man that I, I respect shit like that man that's some gangster shit the storied celtics might have been the winningest team in nba history but they were fresh off their worst season in 30 years and in bird they had a player who was not only supremely talented but tough enough to take on any challenge you know, i always played like everybody in the world was against me you got to but everybody was against me you should think up things to get me rattled before a game he knew how to fight. I know that from off the floor. <laughs> one night, somebody was giving one of his buddies a hard time, and Larry went over and, you know, said, hey, you know, this is my friend. And this guy was a pretty good-sized guy. By golly, they go out back, and the guy turns and says something to Larry. And I mean, Larry hit this guy, and I caught him. Hit him so hard, I go, whoa. He was from the old school. And I, yeah, that's yeah. how we play. Larry Bird. Yeah, Larry man. Bird the help, baby. Played the game hard. Played rough. There was no frills That's about him. That's the funniest picture ever. He came in, ever. he threw elbows. There was nothing smooth about Larry. Hey, nobody today is diving for the that shit like that. Like that. They're I can admit. People. They like that. That's how people view them. And that's what Larry was. Larry Bird. Follows his own shot. Oh, they also like winners when Bird led the Celtics to the NBA championship in just his second season, he was finally one mm. of those two. Boston loved Yeah, he won Bird. that early? I didn't know that. It wasn't so clear at first how much Bird loved the city back. There's only one place I'd rather be, French Lick. Thank you. Man, Larry was almost agoraphobic in his treatment of anything outside his hometown. He wanted to be the Wizard of Oz. He wanted to intimidate people and keep them at bay. The further we are away from each other, the more I like it. I had a nice little house. I had my little yard. I want to go from there to practice back. If we had a game coming up, I want to go there, the game and back home. It was all basketball. My whole life was basketball. If he was just sitting there with just me, you were looking around mumbling, trying to find things that we had in common that we could talk about. Now, we started talking about basketball, we started talking about players, it was, you know, it was great. Uh, U.S. history? No. You know, we forced passes, we made errors down the stretch. Daily events? No. I made the shot, and from then on, we was up by two, and they had to get back in the game, which they did. Politics? No. Try to not do anything I can't do, or do no more than what I can do. I just go out and try to do my basic game. 
He proudly dubbed himself the Hick from French Lick, and he looked every bit the part. The fuck is a Hick? But those who played him for simple did so at their own peril. One of the great ways, I think, of winding up with no money in your pocket is to think Larry Bird is dumb. Syntax is not intelligence. Unlettered is not stupid. He's got a great sense of humor. He just didn't show that to people. That didn't mean he didn't have it. He did, however, allow the public one small indulgence. You could come out on Saturday and watch him mow his lawn. Huge crowds toward the stop. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, <it's like laughs> That's wild. Mowing his lawn in the springtime. That's the most Larry, Larry Bird shit I ever heard. And I think it's one of the things that made him so beloved in Boston. But as Bird navigated through his new world, he still had one eye fixed on a familiar foe in a faraway land. What tripped me out was I'm riding, right? I'm riding in the limo and I'm seeing orange trees and lemon trees in people's front yards. I said, stop, I gotta go pick an orange. Are you crazy? I said, no, I gotta do this. And so I ran up like a like a scared little kid, grabbed the orange, and ran back to the limo. I'd never seen an orange tree. I'd never seen a lemon tree. I was fascinated. When 20-year-old Irvin Johnson Damn. arrived in Los Angeles in the fall of 1979, he was a world away from Lansing, the only home he'd ever known. He was the number one pick of the L.A. Lakers, a once dominant franchise stuck in mediocrity. In his rookie season, Magic had helped lead the Lakers to the NBA Finals against the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm. In Game 6, with an injured Abdul-Jabbar back home in L.A., Magic played all five positions, scored 42 points, grabbed 15 rebounds, wow. and dished out seven assists, that leading is... the Lakers to the championship. In just four years, he had won titles in high school, college, and the pros. Magic, Yo, Magic was have serious. What you perform like this in these championship games? Well, I don't know, just, I love to win. Across the masthead of the Los Angeles Times, the next day, it said, it's magic. He was a star when, when he first arrived here, coming off the NC2A game. And quickly, during that first season, um, he became one of the stars in town. But that game put him on another level. That made him the star in town. It's funny how I wanted to meet the celebrities, but they hey, wanted to Sydney meet me. Is that Sidney Poitier? I was like, shocked. Like, wow, well, do you know who I am? He was young, famous, and after Lakers owner Jerry Buss signed him to a 25-year, $25, $25 million contract, mm. very rich. The kid from Lansing was ready to sample a different kind of fruit. His playboy boss knew all the ripest trees. Yeah. Said, oh, I'm hanging with him. When they were coming into the box, and he had 10, 20 of them, and look, Irvin, which one you want? And I was like, oh, okay, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, said, I feel like both Magic and Bird, I feel like they ended up in the right circumstances. Like, could you imagine if Bird was in L.A. and then fucking Magic was in Boston? That shit would look crazy, man. It's like, and it fit both of their personalities. Like, Magic is, you know, a little louder. He kind of wants the spotlight a little bit. And Bird is very, very quiet. And, you know, he doesn't want to, you know, so I feel like it, it worked out perfect for both guys, man. Are you kidding? I said, yeah. So I went there, and my first time, I'm bagging up. Like, I can't believe I'm in, but I'm bagging up away. You know, it's like, I'm scared to death. Probably 10 guys to a hundred women, you know. Uh, Everybody think it's sex driven, but it's really not. You, you you have dinner, then you watch the latest movie. And then of course, I don't want to ever say that sex wasn't involved because if you meet somebody- yeah, Don't play around with it, Magic, do, man. Did that, but it's really a, a great experience to go up there. So yeah, I had fun there. Uh, he came to LA like the Pied Piper. You know, people were giving him this and giving him that. But, you know, he stayed pretty grounded to the game. Everybody was getting high then. But you can't even smoke a joint around Magic. He had real old school down in the trenches. That's working. why they got along. And that was honed in him by his dad, Irvin Johnson Sr. Magic was always this guy, you know. 
He never did none of that, so I did everything for him. Magic Johnson was living on a natural high. He was starring in the role of a lifetime, point guard of a Hollywood team with an offense called Showtime. He even had the alter ego perfect for the production. I mean, Magic was his stage name. Even he would laugh about it. <laughs> Well, he always says, there's two people. There's Irvin Johnson from East Lansing, and there's Magic Johnson from Hollywood. Irvin Johnson is another guy, you know. Here's Magic over here, and here's Irvin over here. Irvin is this fun-loving guy. <laughs> Magic was so serious and dedicated to his game, and he was a crazy, crazy competitor yeah. man, a crazy man. Irvin, I think, is the smiling kid from Lansing. I think Irvin died about 25 minutes after the NCAA championship game. Irvin doesn't have the ego that Magic has. Magic got a crazy ego, and winning is everything. And Irvin wanted to, along with Magic, conquer LA. After having led the Lakers to two NBA titles in their first four years in town, That's Magic and Irvin were on their way. I think Magic wanted to be friends with Larry Bird. He wanted to be friends with him on the World Invitational Tournament, and Larry just wasn't very receptive. I think he wanted to be friends with him during the Final Four. Larry wouldn't even go over and shake his hand. So now Magic's saying, well, what's with this guy? Everybody loves me. How come you don't love me? And then they get to their rookie year, the first time they play each other, well, they have a very hard foul. I've never seen that. We separate a little bit. And Matt's just like, all right, well, the heck with this guy. You don't like me? Fine. All right, good. I don't like you either. Okay. He's a, a very uh, competitive player, and I'm a very competitive player. And uh, we go head to head, and uh, we go for blood almost. The vibe was, it was nasty. It was oh. ugly. It was, uh, we didn't like each other. Never seen I'm that play before. All that. To tell you the truth, it was. I just don't want to be hanging around him. I mean, that's my main competition. And he couldn't escape the memory of losing to him in 1979. Oh, it ate at him bad that he didn't win that national title against Magic. That was something it just burned him. It was one thing for them to be in the 79 championship. Magic had the better team. Everybody agreed with that. Magic had the better game. Fine. Now you get to the pros. Larry has this incredible year. Hey, watching in a club. A good shot. While Magic Johnson wins a championship, and he's thinking, ah, "All right, I'm behind two to nothing now." <laughs> I watched that game, and I couldn't believe it. I always wanted to play at that level. But what Bird couldn't possibly have known was that he had inspired Magic's performance when he was named Rookie of the Year earlier that same day. Mm. The PR person from the Lakers says, "Hey, Irvin, the Rookie of the Year voting has come out." And Magic says, okay, well, who won? He said, well, Larry Bird won. And Magic says, well, was it close? And he said, oh, no. Well, he went out he that got day three yes, votes. to try to win the NBA championship, but also to prove it to one Larry Bird. You know what? I should have been Rookie of the Year. Even though I won the championship, I still won the win Rookie of the Year, too. He won that championship. I was pissed. I won him one. But even after he had won one the next year, his obsession only grew deeper. I'd get up in the mornings and see what he did because their games came on late. Then you look at the box score. I had to have him there for some reason. It was like a crutch, somebody I could compare myself to. Mm -hmm. I hated what was being said that Larry was better than me and I'm just a guy who can control the game. My first four or five years, that bothered me a lot. The NBA's best all around player. Did. Their competitive dislike emerged from a greater truth that on the court, they were doppelgangers. Team-oriented stars who cared about winning above all else. Basketball savants who fused the substance of the 60s Ooh, the I love that the 70s fucking fast. to create a new and exciting yet selfless way to play the Ooh, game in the 1980s. Larry? Yeah, I'm gonna pass. But I'm gonna pass in a way to make you look like a jackass. They were so similar in the way they competed. I mean, they were two halves of the same brain. Same craziness to excel. I seen that first couple days I was with him. Basketball IQ off the chart. 
seen the game a little different most players. Playing the game the right way was everything. A lot of guys can just score. A lot of guys can just rebound. A lot of guys can just make plays. We can do it all. Larry and Magic could control the game with 12 shots. It was amazing. They'd be 7 for 12. They'd have 20 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 assists. And you go, man, the guy shot the ball 12 times and was the best player on the court by far. But I think it was tough at first. I don't think either one of them wanted to recognize that they had any equal anywhere in what they did. But they sure as hell didn't want to recognize that their equal happened to be that other guy. That's why we hated each other, too, because we knew we were mirrors of each other. I think for a while, the two of them had, they had to come to grips with that. They had begun changing the game, but with continued low television ratings and tape-delayed finals, the league was struggling to get the word out. When the NBA and CBS signed a new TV deal before the 82-83 season, the rescue plan was simple. Sell more Bird and Magic, and sell them not just as ballplayers, but as arch-rival characters in their own dramatic saga. You got this slick, showtime African-American guy out west, and you got the lunch bucket, floppy-haired white guy with the bruises all over his body. It's central casting. It's perfect. I mean, this was like made in It works. Heaven. It works. In 1979, this idea of magic and bird was created, and so that was sort of a no-brainer. We'd have a doubleheader. It would be the Celtics playing first and the Lakers playing second, and that's the way we did it. And when the Celtics and Lakers both reached the finals just a year into the new TV deal in 1984, it appeared the superstar investment was about to pay off. It was huge. It was probably the biggest moment the NBA had up to that point. You had Boston and LA, East against West. It had all the elements of, of a classic showdown. Including what was becoming the most inescapable element of all. Did we know that the blacks and whites were lining up, the whites with the Celtics, the blacks with... Of course we knew that. Mm -hmm. even in the Celtics' own backyard. They land at Logan Airport at the 84 finals. He's getting accosted by various people who are telling him Larry's going to take him down. But this one older African-American gentleman comes up to me and goes, Magic, I want to wish you well, good luck, I want you to crush the Celtics. And he said, oh, well, where are you from? He said, well, I'm from Boston. And he said, you're from Boston and you're rooting for the Lakers? I thought everybody here was crazy about the Celtics. And he looked right at me and said, now why would I root for those white boys? Mm. Boston, after all, was a town still scarred by the ugly busing crisis of the mid-70s. A violent period of urban unrest during which white had been pitted against black. The resulting taint on the city nationally, coupled with a Boston roster littered with white players, affirmed to many black Americans that the Celtics were not the team for them. That <laughs> picture is Even crazy. Today, people... I got a question for you guys, man. Some of you guys might get mad at me. You might leave a dislike. You might get, you know, you might unsubscribe, whatever it is, man. And then some of you guys are going to be able to have the conversation because you're mature and all that stuff. So I'm assuming that most Larry Bird fans are white. I would consider myself a Larry Bird fan as well, along with my mom as well. Would you guys still love Larry Bird and get in the comment section and praise him and say that he's the greatest basketball player you've ever seen and he's better than LeBron, all of that stuff, if he was not white? Get in the comment section and let me know. You played with the Celtics, and you know, I hated you at that time. You know, I, I wanted Magic to win. I didn't want that damn Larry Bird to win. We had all these black players, but they looked at us because we had Larry Bird leading us as a team that was white. They were mm. perfect archetypes for what was becoming the biggest story in sports. But for the real life players, the narrative was much simpler. It's finally going to happen. We get to go head to head again. It's just a matter of rolling that ball out there and let's get it on. Welcome then to the Boston Garden and the start of the NBA World Championship Series. I'm Brent Musburger. In each of the last four NBA World Championship Series, either Magic or Bird has competed. Yeah. This is the first time that the two have gone head to head for the time. Their rivalry, I said rivalry, they are rivalry jumped out on them that first That rivalry game. was always good. And we won in Boston. And with less than a minute to go in game two, the Lakers were closing in on a commanding series lead. Mm. From that point on, things began to crumble. Down to nine seconds. Matt throws the ball. Magic 
trying to work on Maxwell. Magic has still got it down to two seconds. One second. He's going to have to shoot it. He doesn't get it off. He doesn't get it off. Cheesy Johnson dribbling the timeout. <laughs> what? what are you doing? The Lakers regained their stride in game three, only to be rudely knocked off it again in game four. That is crazy that that happened in the game. Cooper and the Celtics had he clotheslined him. When Kurt Rambis got taken out, he could have like hurt himself so bad. He started fighting and started playing. Kareem swings the elbow and now is yelling at Larry Bird. Jaw to jaw. And it made us realize we were not mentally tougher than the Celtics. Magic's just not himself. To be sure they won't let the time run out as they did in game two. Yeah, something Irish is definitely the wrong. Call a timeout. There are a number of places where you know Irvin didn't do what people expected him to do. Tied at 123. He misses the first. Johnson misses them both. Celtics want a timeout. Responded. Magic Johnson goes to the bench. Burr turnaround and hits. Game five went to the Celtics. Game six to the Lakers. It was like 1979 all over again. Down to one man game for Bird and Magic. If everybody had to look at it, probably would have said this is going to be seven-game series. You know, I thought we'd sweep him in four, but uh, <laughs> it's a little bit longer. Hey, Larry Bird was seven. different with the trash talking, man. Sweep him in four. That's the only time I ever felt that. There ain't no way they're walking out here with a win. Magic Johnson. No way. Lakers have several chances, and here's Larry Bird chucking down the cross. The ball. The Lakers trying to cut it to one. And he loses it. Yo. Pat Riley looked pissed. The Boston Celtics are the NBA world champions. I pride myself in, in being the guy who's going to win it for us and and deliver under pressure. And um, it didn't happen. I hope he was hurt. I hope it killed him. He made some bad plays down the stretch, and nobody in there was happier than me. You know, not only winning the game makes you feel good, but just knowing the other guy's suffering, and you know he was. I remember after the game that both he and I uh, were in the shower crying and stayed in there for about 35, 40 minutes. It was hard because not only had we lost to the Boston Celtics, he had lost to his nemesis, Larry Bird. Bird. I think he just made me dislike him more, you know, because he was that good. And, and I think you, you, you'd be jealous. You, you're jealous a little bit. Larry, does this get you even with magic for what happened between Michigan State and Indiana State all those many years ago? Yeah, we're professionals now, but uh, I won this one for Terry Hope. Well, it was a big deal, and I remember asking Quinn Buckner about it afterwards. They had a celebration in downtown Boston after they won the championship, and, you know, it was unusual for Larry to have these little outbursts, as Quinn would call them. But, you know, about 11.30 at night, finally he turned to Quinn, he goes, I got him. I finally got him. And he was talking about magic. This definitely helped, you know, bring the league back because, you know, obviously they were struggling with the ratings and all that stuff, but, you know, Magic and Bird, man, what an amazing storyline. I wonder how you guys might have felt, some of you guys who might have still been alive at that time, you know, as kids watching this shit, man, because this was some legendary stuff, man. We still talking about it years later, before I was even born, you know what I'm saying? But that's it for the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at I'mHurricaneIsaac95. I'm gone. Peace.